Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I know the whole format of all of this is different, right? So we're, we're going to do something a little bit different. This is who we are as a church. I mean, don't miss this. We, this is who we are. We, we are a small church. We don't have a lot of extra resources, not a lot of extra money sitting in the bank. But we are committed to this value and this idea. We will do for one what we wish we could do for everybody. And so today, in light of this, in this same kind of conversation, I just want to invite some friends to the stage. I want to invite the Mayhews to come. And as they make their way up here, would you do me a favor and put your hands together and let's just celebrate them for a moment. Now, while they get set up, you all may be wondering what's going on. That's okay. We'll get you there in just a few minutes, okay? Welcome, guys. Thanks for joining me up here. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? Good to have you guys up here with us. Let's, uh, let's start off with something simple. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Tell them a little bit about yourselves and uh, how long you guys been married. Um, I'm Tirza. This is Mark. We've been married four years in August, so four almost four years. years. Awesome, awesome. All right, I, I love this. I do a lot of, uh, you know, kind of premarital counseling, those kind of things, and so I love hearing people's story. Where did you guys meet? So we met at Liberty University. We both were in the same program, but a year apart. Okay. So when we actually started dating, we didn't live in the same city anymore, because I was still in school. He was working full-time. Remote dating. Yes. So how did that work? A lot of phone call kind of thing? Yeah, a lot of texting. <laughs> so did you get to actually go on a date in the beginning? Yeah, so our first date was not a date. I didn't think so. I think he's wanting to tell the story <laughs> over there. <laughs> well, because I said it wasn't a date, uh, and I tried to get my friend to come because I drove two hours by myself to drive two hours with a guy I didn't know. Oh, yeah. We spent an entire day at an aviation museum, and then drove two hours again, and then I drove two hours home, so it's well, kind she, of a big She day. must have liked you. You made a good oh. first impression. That's a lot of driving. Yeah, it was a commitment, but it was definitely worth it. So now, who asked well. who out? So, yeah, I'd, when I'd come back to visit, I'd uh, mountain biked a few times with one of my instructors, so I went back just for that, and he asked me to talk to the class because I was working full-time at that point and talk about my job, and after that, we started talking, uh, got her phone number, and we talked for a while and decided that I'd ask her on a date and committed to driving to Washington to a museum. <laughs> And here you are four years later. That's awesome, guys. So, you know, you and I and my wife, we had uh, breakfast, for, maybe it was brunch or lunch, I don't know what it was, but it was a breakfast place not too long ago. And you started telling me a little bit about where you are in your marriage, in your life, and you guys are ready to start a family, but you find yourself in a unique situation. Maybe tell us a little bit about that situation and kind of what you're looking at next. All right, so um, we had this decided at a certain point that if we had not had children that we would look into the adoption process. And so that time kind of came and went and so we went into prayer about that and we just kept feeling called to that. We obviously looked into the other options and there's looking into medical side and all of that and we just wanted to figure out how could we use our money best to touch lives and it just didn't if God hadn't given us a child it didn't feel like that was the best use to look into making it happen we wanted to be able to touch the lives of another child of a family in need wow. and so that's how we started looking into that you want to continue yeah. yeah we just when we looked at it it was just everything that had happened to us as like a married couple and like the jobs we had and the life we were able to have, it just made sense that God set it all up for adoption. And a lot of times it's, you know, one of the spouses or the other spouse that wants to, and mm -hmm. then the other one doesn't. But with us, we just feel like it was always something that we thought might happen. So we always kind of, it was just always in the back of our head. So it just made sense. I, I love this. I love adoption as a whole. I think it's really reflective of the heart of Jesus of adopting us as sons and daughters, and, and so the, the heart of adoption is really close, close to the Lord. I love what you guys are doing. I, I love this part of the process. What kind of adoption are you looking to do? I know there's you know, international, domestic, young, old. How does that work? 
So we decided to do domestic infant adoption. So we are going to be matched with a birth mother or birth family, and they're going to make an adoption plan and place their child with us. So it'll be an infant either um, already born or you, know, you have a few months to get to know the birth family before we take placement of the child. Okay. I think that's one. The birth family and the love on them is one of the reasons we decided to go into that because these days uh, open adoptions are much more popular with infant. Like these mothers are really making a sacrifice. Like people forget about them, I feel like, because they're, abortion's really the easy way out at this point. And they're choosing to take the hard way. They're choosing to raise this child and birth this child that they are going to end up giving up. And there's loss, there's separation, and a lot of these agencies really dig in and help care for them, making sure that their medical care is taken care of, that they get some kind of counseling, that they'll have, if they have separation anxiety and depression and stuff like that after, that they're looked after. I think that's one of the things that help draw us Not towards that Not just the side. child, yep. but the mother of the child. We often, I don't often even think about that. That's really awesome. What does the adoption process look like? I know it's complicated, it's complex, lots of layers. What does that process look like? So the first part, every one of them, every adoption's different, people handle it differently, but the way we went about it is we partnered with a consultancy, which it's a Christian organization that helps kind of vet different agencies and make sure that they're operating ethically, they're operating in a way that honors the child, the adoptive family, the birth parents, and so we started working with them. We looked into a home study. So sit down, you work with a um, home study social worker and they get all of your life together and tons of background checks, making sure that you're You guys a are good safe family. people for yeah, a baby. You're yeah. gonna take care of the child. Uh-huh. And after that, you once we passed all of that, we ended up working with several agencies that we're active with currently that will sh- present situations. So we're at the point we've got our everything together. We're able to start presenting and hopefully match soon. So, so presenting is you two are shown to the family, the mother of the child. So we get, right now we'll get like situations, we call them and it'll be information about a birth family that is making an adoption plan for their child. It says like when they're due and how much it's gonna cost and all that, and then they get our book. So it's basically just a book that we put together with pictures of us, who we are, what we like doing, and then that family will look through, could be anywhere between you know five and 50 different people oh, wow. who they could choose from and then they pick their family that they've decided they want their child to be raised with. Okay, awesome. And I think that the Lord gets involved. That's where my faith comes yes, in, yes. In, in the assignment specifically for you guys. So I, I know that um, we've had some couples go through the church before who were going through an adoption and I heard how much money it costs to do so and my jaw fell on the floor. Uh, what does it cost to go through adoption and what does that kind of money cover? So the there's a, an estimated fee is about 45 for adoption, for domestic infant adoption. Every adoption, again, is gonna be vastly different. So, and then on top of it, you kinda have to add in like, even just printer ink from all the forms that you're printing out and stuff, all that little cost and stuff goes up, so it's about, probably ends up being around 50. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of money. I mean, again, depends on a lot of different things. Well, how do you, so that's an intimidating number, yeah. right? That's a big number. And you're a young couple. You've been married for four years. And I know you're both professionals, but how are you approaching such a big number? What's your strategy? What are you doing? So just to start with, when we started looking at that, it was we've got to save money ourselves. So we looked at paying off our debts, getting rid of all the school debt, cars, anything like that, the little Dave Ramsey and managed to pay all of that off. And so now Have you been able we to were save at the anyone? point we were able to start saving, I think, just the beginning cost. We're pro- for the consultancy home study, we're probably five to 
$7,000 paid into that. Um, we've saved around, I think, 20000 wow. for the adoption itself. So wow. we're almost halfway there. <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm going to throw a time out right here. How old are you guys? Roughly. Let, let me not ask you. Let me ask you. 28. Mama, I know you taught me better than that. He's 28. I don't, she's, you know, whatever she wants to be. <laughs> this young couple has put five to seven towards this in about 20 grand in the bank. I don't know if you just caught. I just don't want to fly over this because as we talk about stuff like this here, you want to see people are doing their homework, legwork. They believe in this to the level that you have deep financial investment. I love that. So don't let me interrupt you. Um, where are you guys in the raising funds? Like, how, do you, how are you going to do that moving forward? What does that look like? So we have already, when we announced that we were adopting, we've already put some stuff up. So we've already raised a little bit of money, and you can kind of, we have a page up that we can update through, and then also that people can give through. And then right now we're doing a virtual 5K, so anywhere you can run, and it's COVID-friendly and all that. And um, we also have... Uh, matching grant that we have received from Lifesong for orphans. And this, this is a big one. All right, so I'm, yes. I'm going to slow down. Both of these are big ones, but this is a, this is a big number that goes along. So can yes. you explain that grant that you have received? You've been, they've been applying for grants. There's scholarships out there. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so Lifesong has awarded us a $5,000 matching grant. So that means anything we raise that goes into that account is going to get doubled automatically. Mm -hmm up to $5,000. So in the end, their gift of 5,000 will end up being $10,000 for us. That's awesome. And how close does that put you? You've put some money up front, you'll have some things, that's 10, how close does that put you? Uh, I mean, it depends on kind of when it starts, but it puts us, if we needed a loan, it would be a very small loan. Okay. Of course, it's pretty much at the end. Okay. And um, I, I wanna say a couple things to you, and then I'd like to talk with you all, if that's okay. Today we were talking about do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. And you started with the place of how do we make the biggest difference, not by a boat, not by a toy, not by a, which is a completely different perspective than most have in the world. And so I believe that you are living the sermon that we just preached, doing for one what we wish we could do ever for everyone. And you're absolutely right that part of the solution, we all get up in arms about abortions, but part of the solution is doing, for one, the mother and the child and part of that process. And what you guys are doing with adoption is a really big part of our church and the heart of our church. And we would love to partner with you in this part of this process. And so I want to share with you all uh, what's, what's on my heart here. And I'd like for, to be able to kind of just talk candidly with you for just a few moments uh, so you heard them talk about this uh, grant that they've already been given, a matching grant. That doesn't mean they have money from it. It just means once they raise the capital, then that money will get matched. So five gets doubled to 10, right? And so what's on my heart for us to do is to complete that $5,000, right? So completely cover that area so that the funds that you're continuing to work on. So I know you're doing other drives. I know you're doing runs, et cetera. I know there are other funds that you need to raise money for. I would like for us to be able to commit with you to raising that $5,000. And what you raise outside of that is for the other portions of that. With us, the ways that we can do that, right? So my wife and I are going to have conversations around what can we sell, what can, how can we be a part of this? There's not a lot of extra sitting around, but I want to be in on this because I believe in what you're doing and our church believes in what you're doing, and I'm asking us to get involved. So just to be frank, we have a building campaign and pledge and stuff. All of that's on pause. This is priority over those things, and then we resume the, that. Does that make sense? So for the same reasons that you're saying, we will hit pause on building so that we can serve people, so that a child's life can be different as a result of that. And so thank you for sharing with us and allowing us to partner with them. Uh, I want you to prayerfully consider how you might be able to partner and to, uh, uh, to give towards. You may not be able to adopt, but you can be a part of a solution for adoption through this. We've done this as a church before. We did this, actually, Kevin and Daisy are grandparents of two adopted children. 
part of what we did here in raising support, you know, selling things. I'm asking us to consider, to prayerfully consider. And so they're going to put a link up here on the screen. And if you would like to give, you can go to this link. You can write it down now. You can find that on our Facebook, on social media. You're going to see that everywhere there. What this does, it just really just takes you into our back end of our church center. So if you want the easier way, the way that you normally give on a Sunday, tithes and offerings, you can give that way. And what it will do is you're going to choose the drop down. It's, it's our giving page. You choose Mayhew Adoption. 100% of the funds that go towards that will go straight into this match program. So if we raise $2,000, then that's $4,000. If we raise the five, then that's $10,000. So I want to encourage you to consider what that looks like, okay? And so for us, uh, I, I want to pray. I want to pray over your family, over this adoption process. And then I'd like for you to consider what that looks like, okay, as, as you might give. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, uh, for this couple. And I thank you for the maturity of the couple. God, what you've been stirring in their hearts. God, that they've moved in position to, to do for one, to do for an adopted child, a, a child who might otherwise go without. And Father, would you bless them in this endeavor? Would you give them favor? God, would you allow the inner workings of the process so that you, you're so orchestrating that, that the exact child that's supposed to be in their home is in their home. God, give them favor. Now, Lord, multiply their efforts. God, the funds that they've raised, the funds that they'll continue to raise, multiply it. Now, God, I pray that you would speak to hearts that are here in the room. Some can sell things, some can give things, but God, that we might be able to contribute towards what you're up to. God, we can't do this for everybody, and we might not have a lot to give, but God, we, we can do something towards it. And I thank you for the opportunity. In Jesus' name.